radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network. All right, here we go. Fade to Black. It is Wednesday, March 15th, 2023. And tonight, our guest is Chuck Fay from MJ13 over in Hong Kong, live in the bunker. Chuck, say hello to the world. Hello, whoa. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. It's Go going ahead. to be a great show tonight. Uh, Chuck uh, is here from Hong Kong, and we have been friends for many, many years. And I like to say that uh, Chuck is the Jimmy Church of China. <laughs> and, uh, and and I love that. Um, and tonight we're going to, uh, it's, it's host to host. Uh, we're going to be talking about all things extraterrestrial and UFO and 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 how he does things over in China. And uh, it's a great show. So, Chuck, welcome to the bunker, man. Thank How you. you. Doing? Thank you. I cannot be. I cannot believe when I look at this window over here, right? <laughs> this little square window here. God, this is like dreaming. Is it? Is it like dreaming? Really? Yeah. Yeah. I. I mean, I. I can never ever imagine. I can. My face. We put next to your face in this little square. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm doing live in a bunker. I, I just can't stop making taking pictures with you. Hey, hey, uh, you know, and and Chuck, it's it's an honor and a privilege to have you here. I've been talking Thank about uh, this night uh, for a very long time. We've been friends for a while, from and, 2016. Yeah, 2016. And uh, I need you to lean into the mic. He's oh, a radio yeah. host, and he he's he's forgotten how to yeah, because uh, I, to to perform. I used to have the mic next to the. Connect to the headphone, right? Oh, that's that's the way you do it. Yeah, that's the way I do it. Well, here in the United States, yeah, with uh, this. we're 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 back a few years. You guys, you know, it's Hong Kong. You guys are space age over there. Everything is is way ahead of us. No, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> now, not uh, now. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I, anyway. There's a couple things that I want to say out of the gate, and um, uh, the first thing is this. Um, out of respect, um, you live in Hong Kong. Um, and so I'm going to lay some ground rules uh, for myself and, you know, for the fader knots tonight that are here um, hanging out with us to understand that uh, we have two different countries, uh, two different systems of uh, obviously, well, first off of government and of lifestyles. But um, you live in Hong Kong, uh, which is part of China. And yeah. so there are certain zones that, uh, out of respect, I'm not going to go into. I never do on the show anyway, but since you're here, mm. uh, I think everybody is going to expect me to go, so, man, tell us about this. And and and, and we can't do that, right? And it, 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 is it a concern of you all the time? Um, what you say on your radio broadcast and 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 what zones you do and don't go into? Uh, yes, there, there, there is some, there are some subjects that have to be very careful when I answer, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I still have to go home anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I still have to go back to Hong Kong and I don't want to be, you know, I don't want that. There are some officials coming to the airport and arrest <laughs> me. <laughs> You know, because God, whatever you say something right right because you're on, on on this show you're on fade to black and 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 i step out of bounds so we're, we're not going to do that tonight there's no reason to even though i'm very curious um about a balloon uh <laughs> yeah, yeah let's just go right there but so check this out um, right i was in um amon jordan right and now uh, check this okay so you know, and and here in in the states where 
you can drive where you want to go, right? You can drive across the country through states, through cities. And, and we have a certain expectations of, of freedoms and go to an airport, you buy a ticket, you fly to where you want to fly to. And and Mm -hmm. certainly within the United States, there's no issues with anything. I'm in Amman, Jordan, man. Right. And I'm flying back to the United States and, uh, and, uh, my, I'm I'm on a anyway, so I walk through and one of the uh, uh, people from the airline, you know, she comes up and I'm in a, I'm in a certain class on the on the flight, right? So she right. comes up, Mr. Church. I said yes. She said great. Follow and right as we turn the court, these customs dudes mm. step right up and go, come with us. <laughs> And and she's like standing there, and she steps back, and I'm like, "But my, f- what what's going on, mm. dude? They took me, they took they took me aside, man, and went through my stuff, and and suddenly nobody spoke English. Okay, yeah, right, right, and nobody's right, and I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> and they kept telling me to sit, and I was like, I'm not sitting. They took all of my stuff out. They took my passport and photographed right. everything in my luggage with mm-hmm. my passport next to it. That's scary. Yeah. And and they kept me there for about uh, close to an hour. And my flight's leaving. Oh, no. And, and so when they were done, mm-hmm. I'm not making this up, man. They opened this door and they... And, and let me out and then close and I'm standing I don't even know where I'm at. I'm like what in the airport? Yeah, I'm like what the hell? And uh and I was the last person on the plane. Yeah, mm. they were closing the door another couple of minutes and and so that's an example of you know here in the states we're used to a certain but but when you're in another country you live by their rules and their laws and and Definitely. And there's nothing you can do about it. No, not much you can do. And and so, well, then put it this way: I, um, in Hong Kong, we are not getting to this security yet. Up to now, it's still pretty freedom to um, in a lot of perspective, but mm-hmm. we are losing it. I I that's what I'm. I can't, I can't feel. Yeah, and I don't want you to, again, there's no reason to step out of bounds here. See, he's already, right. uh, I can, Chuck's voice. Yeah, yeah, let's not get you nervous. But no. But what about, <laughs> what about uh, the UFO subject? Um, uh, there must be two different versions of how it's dealt with. There's the government side, and then there's you, the people side. Mm. Uh, d- does the government over there talk about the subject like the United States government is doing now? No, not at all. Not at all. They they try to avoid quite a lot of um, informations, like, for example, like the UFOs. And UFO information is no longer become interested to most of the people in Hong Kong because all this happening this years and the people are paying a lot of focus on the politics and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, democracy and all that stuff. Do they? These days. Now, okay, so um, we're going to stay right here for a second because <laughs> the internet and information, right? So it's it's coming across into Asia. It comes into Hong Kong. You being in Hong Kong, you have you have Google. Do we do? Yes. Right? But across the water, no Google. Uh, across the border, no. Yeah. Uh, Google, YouTube, Facebook, and quite a lot of social media was banned. In China. In China, including right. Fade to Black. Fade to Black is not in China. It's not in China. Wow. You can, you can get to the website. That's the, that's the point. Really? Yeah. Okay. So you in, in Hong Kong... Uh, you have fade to black, right? Right, and you have access to uh, like Fox and CNN. Yes, we do. So, if Tucker Carlson is interviewing somebody about UFOs in Hong Kong, you've got that. But in That's China, right. no. they have no idea that they have no the United idea. States government is interested in this. No, uh, news are pretty much in control in uh, places. Right. Um, they have to control how many information can goes to the citizens 
what information not to go to the citizen. Pretty normal. I mean, that's that's pretty normal to. I mean, all these years in China and all these years in even now is Hong Kong as well. There, yeah. there. Um, okay. Remember, I told you there is a UFO conference in Los Angeles last this month. Yeah, right. Uh, Alien Con. Alien Con. I was supposed to go there. But when I arrived to the States, mm -hmm. my cousin, my, my cousin lives in Los Angeles, and uh, he, she asked me whether I know anything about the alien con. I said, I don't know anything about it. He said, no, I thought you were coming for the, for the conference. I said, no, because I cannot get into any, any information into it. Wow. I cannot get all the information. I can get to the website, but it was wrong. The information are not going to your location something like that right 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 that's crazy so they have the ability to filter that's right. the Definitely. real information you can go to the website but anything that's beyond that any information or anything it's that's, not there that's true i don't know why they banned the ufo information or conference information it doesn't make no sense right but it happens okay right um oh, so here in the state, okay, let's talk about UFOs in China, because there were some incredible images of the cities in the clouds. Oh, right. Right? And um, there were the UAPs that shut down the Beijing airport for a day. Yeah. And those images made it over to the states. Do the people of China know about those incidents? Yeah, they know about it. And then probably like six months Oh. Probably a year ago, there was a tr huge triangle up there in uh, Shanghai. Right. And people film it. And uh, again, uh, people coming out and try to explain it. Like this is uh, like the reflection from the building, from the spotlight and all that. But right. we all know that it's not true. Right. People's, people knows about UFOs. Uh, people saw UFOs in China. But at the same time, this is something people not really interested in it. Right. It, it, are they not interested because they are told they're not interesting, right? They are not. <laughs> if, if you know what I mean. Yeah. All right. It's not interest. They are not really interested because of it doesn't make money. Right. Okay. I mean, the UFO in the sky, what is it going to do with me? What is it going to do with my business? What is it going to do with my wallet? I've got nothing to do with them. Right. Now, okay. Only a few person. For example, like, like people who saw the UFOs themselves or people who've been encountered with aliens or UFOs or maybe kidnapped, abducted by aliens, they will become really interested into this. And what I what I can tell is the China government, they don't really stop people from doing it, stop people from studying it, right? But there are so many, so many UFO com, uh, society in uh, China uh, quite a lot of them are actually controlled by the government. That's what I know. So what about, um, okay, so here in the United States, we have MUFON. Right. Right. Or so we have the local MUFON chapters in cities across the country. They get together once a month and mm -hmm. and eat and drink and, and talk UFOs and stuff. Are there, are there groups in China that are UFO societies that yeah, get together? Yeah, groups for... A UFO study when they do eat and drink and a lot of time, but they don't really follow to the UFO subjects. And if they find something, I believe they will go to the out uh, go to the military directly. But oh. then, then after that, it will close, and you won't be able to find out anything. Right, 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 right. At all. So it wouldn't be in the local newspaper. It's not going to be on TV. Well, it will be in the newspaper. I mean, for example, like sighting in the Shanghai in the social media. You know, you, you see a lot of video from the social media. Right. But the government will not make any official announcement. They will not make any official, uh, like, they, they they knew something, but they, they don't tell. Right? right. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Uh, like, again, here we have MUFON. So if you have a sighting, you have uh, the National UFO Reporting Center, right, uh, New, For um, uh, New Fork up in... Um, uh, Washington with Peter Davenport. Right. So there are places, as you know, where if you have a sighting, if you want to report the sighting, you can do that. And if you want it investigated, you know, and let somebody know to look at the evidence, you can do that. In 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 China, 
what no right no no you, there's no way no way you can report it and you don't know report it to who nobody really cares well even though we know the government really cares about it but they don't have a platform they don't have a way that you can just report what you're citing no right people will film it and then put it up to social media and then people start talking about it and people some of them will say try to explain it some of them will say this is a real ufos but you never know whether that's true or not right, right and um right, the right. point is one of the point is very important is because um well how to say it i have to now i have to say it really carefully because it gets to quite a sensitive point right just people who like to make things up mm -hmm. or faking it up mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. You know, by a lot of of software we can do right now. You mm -hmm. know, there's so many editing software you can simply put a fake spaceship on the in the sky. So you don't know how many percent of the video we saw from TikTok is real. We don't know. So that could be a faking up. That could be a real scenario. We never know. Yeah, yeah, you you don't. If you want to see good fake UFO videos, TikTok is the place to go, man. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. There's, there's no doubt about it. They just say when there is something from the TikTok, and then most of the Hong Kong people, some of the Hong Kong people, uh, will say this is from TikTok. We don't believe it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what it's about. Um, but okay, so um, social media. We've got issues here in the United States with social media and uh and censorship and and even on this show um i have to be careful about what i say mm. uh, um and in even um when i hosted coast to coast um i have a lot of freedoms here on fade to black i can talk about whatever i want i can use whatever language i want to use for the most part if i you know if, but i do stay in bounds but uh, over on coast to coast, there were certain zones I, I couldn't go into, and I was constantly censoring. You know, I'm thinking all the time. I'm censoring myself. Um, but that's fine. But even here in the States where um, – the and I, I don't even like saying what was censored because that will trigger – software and get me censored but mm. but we we wreck so um uh, and that's with facebook and with twitter and and instagram and 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 certainly youtube um and other platforms um and over in china th those those platforms are completely regulated right that's true right it is so is there uh, um freedom to talk is there ufo pages on i don't know what the chinese version of facebook is called do you want uh, to say it on the air that was um i think that is called sino i think okay close enough i don't know i don't but but i know like that, that they have a version i've seen it it looks the same right <laughs> looks the same yeah and but it's way more complicated it, oh. a lot more complicated everything similar to like the ebay we got ebay we got paypal we got similar things in china but it's way more complicated because they had to do a lot of steps to stop uh, yeah weibo that's what they call weibo yes yeah weibo yeah <laughs> very good um yeah but they're so so complicated to do things because they're doing a lot of steps to stop people from cheating you know what I mean? I, uh, For example, I, like like a payment platform. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Do of a course. lot of steps to stop people from like cheating, or like people from, you know, washing monies, you know, money all laundering. That, yeah, yeah, all these things, and um, that's why it's complicated. And they have to do a lot of like proving. You have to prove who, whoever yourself, uh, prove your identity, prove your number, prove your address. They do a lot of steps to do it. Um, now with, um, with your show M MJ 13, which, right. um, everybody should know, and you can go, uh, you can check out, I've got Chuck's links, uh, to his website oh, right. below. You can go and, and, and check it out. He doesn't have an English version of the site, by the way, but <laughs> if you should, I'm thinking you should, I'm you, thinking of, uh, starting another channel and then talks about uh, Asian UFOs. Well, you, know? you should. 
You should. You should do it. Yeah. Your English is great, by the way. He speaks better English than than I do, and certainly most of <laughs> no. most of this audience. But um, but your subjects on that, you broadcast out of Hong Kong, right? Could you do MJ thirteen in China? Wow, that's um. Could you do it in Beijing? No, you could not. No. <laughs> no, internet radio has become very sensitive again right now. I mean, it used to be like pre freedom, people can do whatever they want. They do, do the talks. Right. They talk about normal leisure life, like where to eat, where what to wear, uh, new headphones, whatever. But they are very sensitive when you talk about UFOs, when you talk about something close what, what to about, politics okay what about okay i want you to pull your chair forward like okay. three inches that'll force you to sit yeah now talk okay see how loud he is now that's yeah. how loud he is he's a loud dude <laughs> he's louder than me okay okay see now i gotta turn you this is great oh no sit that, that was perfect um what about ghosts no you can't talk ghosts. No, remember i told you before when uh somebody makes some film make a mix ghost ghost movie Right, in Hong Kong, we can play a ghost movie normally, right? Like a like a story and like any kind of haunted movies, whatever, which is scary, right? But in China, years ago, the director have to make an alternate. I mean, make another versions at the end, and to let the movie play in China because communists they don't believe in ghosts, they don't believe in religion, right? So. You're not like, for example, not only about the ghosts. Like for for example, like there are a lot of Tao master. Mm -hmm. You know, they are not allowed to talk. They are not allowed to uh, how to how to say it, to predict the stock market by the Tao. You know what I mean? Yeah. You cannot predict stock market in China, even in Hong Kong right now. Like for example, if you have somebody who use tarot cards. Right, or you're someone who is um, the fortune teller. Yeah, they're not allowed to say anything about stock markets because of that. <laughs> really, they break the law. Well, I mean, we laugh about it um, <laughs> because I mean, who would listen to them anyway? Um, oh. but, but if you know what I'm saying, come on, I'm just I'm just joking here. But but wow. But in in it it's okay okay so let's let's swing this back I don't want this to go in that direction. Um, uh, Let me say one thing first before okay. you finish that. When there is a location which is not stable enough, then people will like to find answers from like fortune tellers, like to know the future, right? Uh huh. Not only on the financial, but on everything, any kind of. Any anything personal For example, life, like personal life, love, politics, your love life, yeah, yeah, works and politics. People really cares about politics these days, and that is very sensitive for for me to talk anything about so the politics in Hong Kong, even in here in the states, which is almost impossible. You can't do it <laughs> if you don't want to get in trouble. Have to be very careful to to your your speech. And and here's the other here's the other thing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, for me, that when we look at uh, China, especially you know, you you think about you know, you, 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 Taiwan and Shanghai and Beijing and Hong Kong, the advancements of of sciences and society and. China is leading right now in space, right? They've got their own space station and and their their uh, advancements into AI and computing and they have all the manufacturing and you know they're so advanced and and we have to say that it's it's leading the world right now. Mm. They, there must be when you look at a, a city like Hong Kong, right, the most expensive place to live on earth, everything goes on there. Yeah, I realized. Uh, very, and people must be thinking about the vastness of space and how much alien life is out there and the stars and planets and exoplanets because of where China is in aerospace and all of those industries. Yeah, you believe so? 
I, I, well, I'm saying you would think that, right? Um, uh, but you're saying no, no, no. Wow. There, you remember many years ago when we were in uh, one of the UFO conference and then uh, Cry Lewis asked me about the electronic radio, the, 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 the telescope uh -huh. in China. Uh-huh. Right, that is the biggest one. The, in the biggest world, right? radio telescope in the world. Now that Aris, it's bigger than Arecibo in, yeah. in Puerto Rico. Right, and yeah. then the one in Puerto Rico is cracked. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, and I remember Cry asked me, "Do you think China will find alien earlier than everybody else?" I have to, <laughs> I have to answer the question on live, very carefully because I said. Well, I remember my answer is you have, in terms of finding aliens, you need two things. You need the skills and you need the technology, right? Right. And China may got the technology, but they don't have the skills. So I don't think, I don't think they will find aliens of uh, earlier than everybody else. Do you remember, um, I, no, this may be a sensitive area, okay, but... Try me. Yeah, uh, Okay, so China did a press release uh, through mm -hmm. their state newspaper about a year ago that that telescope detected alien communication. Signals, yeah. Signal, and they, they use the word communication, right? Okay, so... So this blast out, and this got picked up here in the States very quickly. I covered it here on Fade to Black. And there was like two or three press releases that went out that day. China intercepts alien communication, right? Okay, right. so um, that went out the next day. It, all put down. it was all gone. Right. It was all gone. It happens all the time. Because probably... Okay, that's I can only say it in my perspective. Okay, I couldn't. This is not official, and I'm not represent any countries, any government. Okay, I just say it from my belief. Okay, what I believe is, well, you know, you have to if you spend all this money and you build a telescope that big, one of the biggest in the world, then they would love to tell the world they find they got the result mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so is to me to me it's pretty much like you know announce it and to everybody else and then to convince them we have the technology we have the power to communicate with aliens but at the same time in hong kong quite a lot of people in hong kong they don't we don't we don't put it seriously, put it this way. It's not the point of believe or not, but we don't put it, we don't put it too serious. That's the, that's what we learn all these years. Whatever the tales from the news may not be totally accurate. Mm. Is that, is that understand easy? Yeah, it, 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 it's perfectly clear. And then, so when, what do you discuss on MJ-13? Like, uh, uh, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. um, uh, forget about the, the triangle over Shanghai. And right. I do want to know more about that, by the way. But let's say the Congress UFO hearing that happened six months ago here in the right. States. Did you talk about that on uh, MJ-13? I talk about it, but I'm the only one who talk about it. No news, no media will talk about it. They don't... Well, okay, um, I try to explain more. If there is a location which the politics is not stable enough, then they will make other noises, make other news to distract people from paying attention into what they want to pay attention to, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they will have some other stories, have some other really shocking news, try to distract people from the other, what, what we know, government do things like this, right? We, we do the same shit over yeah, here, though. Right. Man. We do the same stuff. I mean, definitely. It, it seems like anytime there's anything like, you know, like you're saying, right, some crazy thing, they will find a new story to cover that up, right? To bury it, and the next thing you know, they've got something else to talk about. That's true, but in in the states, a lot of 
news that cover is probably like a UFO land or crash in some somewhere in the states. Right. They make newses or something else to cover that, right? People pay attention to the other news, forget about the, the landing, about about the crashing. But that's what United States government usually do to cover the UFOs or things they don't want to disclose. But in China or in Hong Kong, this part is always about the politics. Wow. And so, um, but but ET contact, Chuck, it's an Earth thing. Right. It's not a United States thing. Right. It's not a Spanish thing. Mm-hmm. Right. It, it's not a Russian thing. It's an Earth thing. Yeah. So you, there must be the same sightings, the same contact in China or Russia or Australia or you know Brazil, the United That's States, true. even Canada. Right. <laughs> and true, so, yeah. so I mean, why? Why? Okay. So can I can I show this book to yeah, everybody? Definitely. Okay. Thank so uh, I was gifted this today. Uh, it's a hardcover book. It is called UFO Drawings from the Cantonese World by Chuck Fay. Right there, compiled right. by Chuck Fay. And this is, uh, a, it's, it's amazing. Color illustrations of drawings of, of things that have been seen uh, through, in Hong Kong. Uh, in Hong Kong. Um, and th- this shows me that it isn't any different there than it is, you know, here in, in California. That's, that's true. That's true. There are quite a lot of, quite a lot of sighting in China and quite a lot of sighting in Hong Kong as well. Some of them are really crazy. I mean, you look at it, you talk to the people and you know, they're not faking this up. They know, you know, they're, they're not lying. They're telling the truth. They so want to tell somebody, right? They have, they right. saw the sighting. They saw the UFO. They don't know who to talk to. Somebody talked to the wife, and the wife think, "Oh, you must be drunk." Somebody t- tell the parents, and the parents say, "No, you're not lying to me." You're like all this kind of situation that happens to most of the people in the world, right? Right. But I want to collect stories from the people who speak Cantonese, because in Hong Kong, people speak Cantonese instead of Mandarin. Oh, is that right? Nobody knows that. No, I, I, I just learned something. Yeah, when people come in over and know, you're from Hong Kong, and they start talking Mandarin to me. And then I have to tell them, no, Hong Kong people to speak speak Cantonese, not Mandarin. Who's got the better food, Hong Kong or Beijing? Of course, Hong Kong. Hong Kong's <laughs> got the better food. Yeah, Hong Kong got food from all over the world. You can have Japanese food, Indian food, United States food, right? All it, kind it, of, it, anywhere. Do they have taco trucks? That definitely. They have tacos in Hong Kong. Tacos, yes. Are they as in good as the shop. ones that we just had? Uh, what the one we have? Yeah. No, that is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you won't find it from Hong Kong. We just had tacos uh, yeah. before the show tonight. Um, <laughs> the uh, and they were good. Um, more after uh, we're done. Um, but uh, yeah, I like it. Hong Kong and speak Canton is like Bruce Lee. Is that right? Yeah. Is, is that right? That's right. That's right. Okay. So right. It's, it's totally different. I mean, the culture is different. People, the way the people think is different. Is he? Is he like? Is he? Is what, he like mean, a deity in Hong Kong? What Bruce Lee? Yeah. Oh, he's one of the best. Yeah, yeah. He's got. I mean, he is here for sure. But right, I can only imagine he's like Elvis no, in Hong Kong. Yeah, definitely. Now, you, if you see that some of the old documentary or some of the old clips yeah. from YouTube, you see he do he did the um, interview when he's in Hollywood, uh-huh. and people ask him to do how do you do the dance, how do you do the walks on uh, the China opera, uh, and he does this all this acting, all these gestures, amazing guy. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, the absolute best. We should. We could do a whole show on Bruce Lee. I have no issues with that. I did. Um, I got. Um, I have it in the garage. Uh, uh, I don't have a DVD player anymore, but I got the complete Bruce Lee box set. Oh, you do? Yeah. And I I went from right to the beginning, and I watched them all. Uh, it took, you me, do. T- took me like three days. I mean, I've seen them all 50 times each, right? Okay. But to watch them back to back to back to back like that, uh, right. just absolutely incredible. And um, I'm, I'm glad you don't mention the other Kung Fu stars. 
Why? Because Bruce Lee is the best. Well, you know what, though? <laughs> Here's the thing. Now, now here's now, the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, <laughs> because, because all the other Kung Fu style. Are all Let me very... jump in right there. Let me jump in right there, Chuck. <laughs> Let me jump Go in. ahead. <laughs> Let me jump in right there. No, but here's the here, here's the thing with that. Um, when you watch even um the modern stars today, I just brought up Jet Li, right? Or or whoever. Jet Li. Yeah, and he's he's great. But um Bruce Lee was on film that's true this was not a, a cgi fight or sped no. up or special or you know things and 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 enhanced that we can do today i'm not saying that gently or any of it's not what i'm saying but when you go back and you watch the original uh films of bruce lee on film you see perfection the speed, the precise, the thing, and and of course his body and and everything else that you know he really took care of himself. But you see that he was way above, and That's will true. always be way above everybody else. He was That's a right. very very unique special person. Very very unique because he put uh, kung fu mixed together with um, philosophy, right? So he got this chick. Uh, what was that called? Jeet mm -hmm. Whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Whatever he does mm -hmm. is, um, it was like he put the philosophy he, into the kung fu fighting. Like, for example, he doesn't want to be like solid. They want to be like moving like waters because water can be nice, become a hard object, can be water like flow, really soft. Like, so which is like, yeah, that's what the other mentioned like, be like water. Be yeah, like water. Still. Yeah, yeah. Be like water. There's um uh, uh I'm gonna talk UFOs, man. But anyway, back to Bruce Lee. There's a there's some video out there of Bruce Lee. I think it's in San Jose, and it's his first kung fu uh competition, and he's fighting mm. he's fighting some somebody that probably wishes they didn't get in uh, uh that first match with Bruce Lee, and you watch this. And you can't even see his hands and feet. No. You so fast. So fast. You try the to. The person's standing there, right? You're right. There are my friend who wants to learn Kung Fu, and he doesn't really want to learn any specific Kung Fu, but he wants to learn what Bruce Lee did, right? So he play his video over and over and over again, and he tried to pause and stop to see when he will let the feet go and where he lead the palms the hand goes but he just couldn't stop in the right moment because it's so fast it's so fast and you can press and you see a piece of blur on the hand <laughs> no i know i know i know but after that the guy's gone already i just man i love uh, i just <laughs> i just love those old harvest mo what was it harvest uh i can't remember the name of the uh uh the chinese film company that made those harvest productions or something they were great so anyway so with um mj13 mm -hmm. um how do you uh, what's your format there do you bring on guests and interview them well i uh, i was bringing a lot of guests to my show i mean many years ago but i stopped doing that because you know there are people who may use the show try to how do I say it? Like they are not really a, like a psychic, but they tell they are a psychic and try to get more believer and then get more money and uh, to get, you know, you know, but there are people who've been cheating on, you know, and lost a lot of money. And I stopped doing that because, well, I, first of all, I want to do things like whatever I like, right? And uh, the guess you can, I cannot really control what they're talking about. And I don't want my program, I don't want my platform become another step for people who try to cheat somebody else. Did, right? Is there, okay, so, but here on Fade to Black, I'm able to bring on, you know, different researchers um, in, in the field here. Right. Whether it's, you know, somebody, you know, some of the larger names like Linda Moulton Howe, Richard right. Dolan, or Whitley Strieber, and... And the, the the list of names is long. Um, do you have those kinds of researchers in China to have access? No, it no, doesn't. I don't think so. Well, I am the only one who talks UFOs in the in Hong Kong, and uh, I'm the only 
nobody really can do a like podcast or like a radio station in China without the government's permissions. You know what I mean? But in Hong Kong, we have a little freedom, so I can do my own program. But I'm the only one who talk about UFOs. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Is there、um, like okay? We have ancient aliens here, and、right. and fifty other UFO TV shows. That's true. Do you have what? Do you have an ancient aliens version in China? We have two programs in. Not I don't know about in China. They have. I think they have some UFO shows, but which is really on the surface. Of telling about surface stories, okay, not really deep inside, not really the story belongs to. I mean, if you put it into the conspiracy side, well, anything the government try to cover up anything, they don't say it, right? Okay? Right, right. And there are two programs in Hong Kong. They talk about UFO, and I'm the one who hosts it. So that's, that's it. it. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. Yes. Wow. Wow. So and and okay is in and and that's kind of a problem. Yeah. So、um, in in Hong Kong,、um, the there's probably a state sponsored network, but there's also private television and radio, right?、Uh, not really private television, but they got the license from the government. They, you can you can play. Okay,、I'm, what the program I make is called Alien. I mean American Got Alien. Right. I make two season of it.、Uh, really? Okay. I make two seasons of it, and、um, but you have to package it. You cannot make it like、uh, Asian Alien. You cannot make it like、uh, whatever that history. I remember、show. when you released that. I remember when you were filming it, and I thought to myself then, and now I finally get to ask you about this. There must be somebody on the set, and there must be. There's. Are are you? I, you know. There's. A, a certain amount of government control. Yes, on this show. Yeah. Um, it's not really the government controlling it, but you have to be careful on some of the subjects. Right. Right. When like we 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 when we were making the second season and、uh, back in two thousand nineteen. Yes. Hmm. And uh, when uh, when we travel somewhere else, when we talks about the Cold War, we talks about the um. The, the stories between the、um, communist countries,、uh-huh. and then we have to be very careful to talk about it. You know? Really, we don't want to step on the what we call we don't want to step on the red lines <laughs> because <laughs> you once you step on the red lines, then you've been in trouble. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Well, okay, God, so I'm brave enough to、uh, say, man, man, I'm just—it's <laughs> hot in here, man. It's hot, but okay. So there is the、um, uh, there is a, a, a certain amount of、uh, social status that is being controlled. You know where you you know what you can do and and things,、mm-hmm. and you constantly want to stay. I, I don't know if the color is green, but you want to be. <laughs> You want to be able to go bloop right and 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 be able、mm-hmm. to do what you want to do. That's fine. Okay. No, it's not、right. fine. But I don't. It's it's not my country, and you can do what you want. But but here's the thing.、Um, with、um, here in the United States, right, where we constantly complain about disclosure. And the government holding secrets, and we want these secrets, and we want this, and、yeah. and 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 we we can vocalize those things. And you can write, and then get information through the freedom of、and、information. Freedom Act. Act, that none of that happens. No. What is freedom of information act? <laughs> no. What and, the hell is that? If you mention that in Hong Kong, or if you mention it in China. Yeah, there's freedom in the prison. Okay, okay, right, <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> if 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 you wanted、oh, to, uh, uh, let's go back to the space program, right? An astronaut sees、uh, what do they call Chinese astronauts?、Um, what in Chinese? Yeah, they call it、um, Tai Hongyan. Okay, astronaut. Yeah, it's pretty I, much the same. I, I, I've read it. I've never tried to say it. So, a Chinese <laughs> astronaut. Is up on their new right, right.、Uh, the the new space station, right?、Uh, which is right now. I think there's more Chinese astronauts in space right now, really, than the rest of the world right now. I think there's、right、like、now. nine. 
up there. What, in a space station? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because they, they're transferring. So right now there's... There will be reports about uh, China, Chinese uh, astronaut in the space. They have reports. But if they, they, saw, if they saw a UFO, no. No. No, not, not, not only about that. What they do in the space station, they never really tell. Well, so this is my question, okay? Mm -hmm. So could you go to the Chinese space agency and say, hey, we have you guys know. seen any UFOs up there? Nobody is, nobody can... is going to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like you cannot never really get somebody to talk to, all right? You can watch the news, whatever the news telling you, that's the fact. Well, that's what the government wants to do, right? Do you get in trouble for asking questions? Well, it really depends on what kind of questions you going to ask. Right. 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 Um, but now these days, everything, almost every single thing is about national security. So now they have this national security and then... No matter what, well, you can ask them what they eat in the space station. That could be a national security questions. It's the same thing here in the United States, though. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but well, you, you guys can talk about it, and you we, guys can. We can, we can. But yeah. that's how we always get shut down, like the UFO hearing, right? Right. Okay, so what about what about the UAP? Well, it's a national security issue, and mm. uh, we can't really just, you know, and they, even our, our government hides behind that same BS. Right. They do, they do. And suddenly, um, and the people asking the questions, right. they get all timid too. Oh, whoa, it's a national security yeah. issue. I guess I, I'm not going to pursue that. This so, uh, spiritual message belongs to national security. Yeah, right. Yes, yes, yes. This message from ET is yes. a national security issue. Really? So, well, okay. So forget about the Chinese balloon. Mm. Okay. We can. Uh, How can we forget oh, oh, that? Yeah. yeah. It, <laughs> I heard it went across the United States. But, but so right after that, we had three other. Suddenly, the three United things, States yes. is is shooting missiles mm -hmm. um, at, at stuff and and shooting them the, out of the sky. Right, and even that mm -hmm. became a national security issue. Now, either it's balloons launched by kids or balloons launched by a university or a weather balloon, whatever it is, but suddenly it's a national security issue, and they're not. Well, they're, it is actually. It has a, it is a security issues. Well, now I have to answer this really quest, really carefully because people, when they knew when I met people, they knew I'm from Hong Kong. They were they would expect I'm coming from China, right? But to myself, Hong Kong, China is two different places. We have different cultures, different languages, different dialogues when we talk. So and better is, food, better food, de definitely better food. Um, but when people ask me, is this a spy balloon? So I have to answer that very carefully because on, from the official, from the official, they will say, this is a civilian balloon. This is for the weather balloon, right? Let me put it this way, Jimmy. If I have a camera, like a, like a IP camera or whatever, the internet camera, you can, Look at just look at the home when you're not around, mm -hmm. and you can look at your dogs and uh, to see what they're doing. If I put the camera in my home, that is a civilian camera. If I put it in your home, without letting you know, that's a spy's machine. Uh huh. Right. Yep. Simple as that. Yep. So. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you can just stop right there. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Um, the, you're, you're saving my. Yeah. You're saving my. I'm saving your ass. <laughs> hey, I, was about know, to I don't say need. It. Yeah, you get off the plane at Hong Kong, uh, Mr. Fay. Step over know, here, please. Yeah. Step over here. If that happens, I make sure my audience you're, will let you know. You're going to red. <laughs> you're going to red. You have no access to Mexican food in no. Hong Kong anymore. Um, but uh, it, somebody just popped up, and I thought that this was um, uh, pretty interesting. And uh, the question is, um, uh, triangle UFOs. Let's go back to that uh, Shanghai, Shanghai one. Um, situation. Um, and Shanghai, again, one of the most populated cities um, true. Uh, in the world. 
um, and you know, there's China's got a large population, so there's a lot of opportunity for people to see things in the sky. Um, how big was this uh, triangle? Okay, I I only saw it on the footage from the. I think people just film it and put it up to social media. I saw it twice. It was like a crowd in like in Shanghai, right? Now you imagine in Shanghai there are buildings and the neon lights everywhere, right? So it, the sky is pretty brightened up, and in the middle of the sky, which is like a huge black triangle hiding behind the crowds behind the crowds at night mm -hmm. and there are spotlights everywhere and this black triangle in shanghai uh yeah you're gonna put a g behind the shang yes one more g yeah <laughs> then uh, that one itself is huge very big one very um like how how can i explain this is like a as big as a mothership what we call it Yes, that one there. This one or yeah, this one? This, yeah, that one there. The one, the second one, yes. So um, when they saw it, they just film it, and then they put it up to the social media. Of course, there are people coming out from, like, a sign. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, go ahead. I'm watching the video Okay, here. that one there. So you see this huge one. It's not like what the people mentioned about the TR3B, right? Like a secret triangle flying club from this from the military, but it doesn't look like that because it's too big. It has no light, but just a pure black shadow, a triangle triangle shape shadow in the oh, sky. All right. So there are someone trying to explain this is like the spotlight creating illusion in the sky and uh, make you believe or make you uh, fooling people, but. Holy crap! But it doesn't look like an illusion to me. No, it doesn't look uh, like a no, light. No, 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 no. It's a real solid thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. How how big? This could this could be very, very like a, a huge one, a very big one, I guess. From what I can see from the read from the reader, of oh, course, you don't. Man. And and people try to explain it, but I mean the way he the the um. The explanation is not strong enough because if that is only the building, there is only the lighting from the building, the people should have seen it, mm -hmm. see it all the night, all the time. But this only happens once, right? Right. No, you would see it all over the sky if you're going to see one little. Right. But, but what's in it? Wow. It is huge, right? Oh, holy crap. And what I can tell. This... You see how the clouds are going in front of... In front of it, right there. Right. Yeah. It was a crowdy day, but um, it just show, and it doesn't look like like illusion to me. No. Have you guys seen this video? Have you guys seen this video? Okay. You want to so, share it? Uh, I can. I can. I can. I can bust it up on the screen here in just a second. I'm gonna. I'm gonna right here. Okay. Right here. Okay. Um, I'll, I, I'll I'll show everybody. Uh, this is Jimmy Church of Fade. To oh, man, sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you're so exciting. Yeah, man, I've I've never seen this. I oh, you about never? It. Oh. No, I uh, possibly when it first came out. Um, but uh, okay, so here, here it is. Here, this is out of a window. There's a lot of people here, so I've got it muted. Um, and. The video itself is uh, two minutes long. Um, so check that out. And see how the clouds are moving in front of it here and here? It doesn't look like a Photoshop. It doesn't look like a computer graphics to me. Right. And, and the funny thing is, after this video, there are people trying out to explain it. And some of the people are from the scientists, like like scientists trying to explain it. That's tricking me most because there's a story like back in 2016 when, uh, well, put it this wow. way, when the official tried to cover that up, then there will be a scientist coming out and say something to 
to stop this like this is not real this now real how many going. how many witnesses were there to I, that i think quite a lot of them because this video go wild when when they first launched quite i remember i saw some comments people said i saw the same thing at the same place but they just didn't video it they just didn't film it but they saw it in the same place they saw this triangle hovering like probably like 15 minutes or i don't remember how long probably 10 minutes or 15 minutes and then it's just take off and gone um before we get to the break here um i'm going to talk about two things when we come back um, abductions good is that a safe subject yeah that won't get you arrested no when you get off the plane no but and, uh the abductees just have to escape okay yeah, right. they, yeah. So well, we have the same, it's same problem here same problem here um what about uh does um every country has their own right the roswell of great britain the roswell of brazil the roswell of spain we have the roswell of germany is there a roswell of china i believe so i believe there are roswell like ufo crash into china land not in hong kong because it's too small for hong kong to crash anything <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can crash to Hong Kong because it's so tiny in the little dots in the <laughs> map, right? Um, it has to be very accurate to land in Hong Kong, but in China, uh, there I heard their their UFO crashed. But as like many countries, the military take over right away, really quick. And plus, there are a lot of farmers in China, and they don't they don't give a damn about UFOs because they only worry about their crops. Right, they worry about their life, their incomes. They they having a the, simple life. Okay, so what was the name? I did a show on this a few years ago about the the Chinese uh, uh, guy that uh, he worked in a factory, and, and uh, what was it? And he was why he got abducted, and uh, he lived um, very modestly. Um, um, but, uh, it, he went public with his story mm -hmm. and, and had contact and the craft landed and he went on board and, and became now that was, I can't remember the name of the city, but it was in the middle of China. It wasn't like Beijing. He was, he was out, um, in the middle of China. What was his name? Do you? Oh uh, yeah. That, um, many years ago when I do the interview with Richard Dolan and he, he remembered it well. Right, Richard asked me, you familiar with the case of Manjo Guo? Yes, 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 yes. And yes. then I was like, I don't know. There's a lot of photographs. Right. He became quite right. a celebrity yeah. at that time. It was because when I when I meant when I learned about these stories, I learned these stories from Cantonese. So which is actually is Mangju Guo, which is another another pronunciation. But when Richard mentioned it, he, he mentioned it in Mandarin. Right, so I was like a lost track. I don't know. I never heard about this before. But he said, "No, this is a very famous abduction case in China." And then I only realized that what he what he's talking about after the show. Yes, there's um this this guy is called Mangzhu Guo in Cantonese, in Mangzhu Guo in Mandarin. Um, yeah, he abducted. He was abducted by what he claims is abducted by alien. And uh, if I remember it right, because there are like three major case, three major abduction cases in China, three of them, and pretty much they have the pretty much the same experience. They see, they saw the aliens, then and the alien bring them to the craft or bring them somewhere else. But like what I mentioned, like years before in your show, I mean, in the states, you see people who will experience seeing the aliens in their room. And then they will walk out the window, walk out the, through the wall, right? And then get into the craft. The craft will maybe like outside the house or maybe on the top of their house. They just get out and then see the craft. But those three cases in China, they don't see the craft until they fly from home to the craft. So the craft is somewhere stopped in a in a jungle or somewhere else, mm -hmm. not very close to them. But funny thing is, they fly with the alien. They remember they're flying in the sky, and the alien was like was like holding this arm, levitating. Them. Yeah, and then they're flying together like Superman movies. Right. 
So this is the only quite a, quite a different to the cases from the other places, right? The people will get on the craft as soon as they get out of the house. But in here, they fly from some places, some distant before they get reached to the, the craft. The case that uh, Richard is talking about, um, and if I remember correctly, he didn't have access to television no. or books or things like that, or he knew nothing about science fiction. No. But he told this entire story of right. aliens, abductions, the spacecraft, what it looked like. Right. Um, he did multiple television interviews um, and became, you know, not only should I say a local celebrity, but his case was uh, definitely talked about throughout mm -hmm. China for, for the rest of his life. Right. But don't forget one thing. Then um, in his story, well, two things we have to pay very attention because in his story, he's not the only one who see the, in the craft. If I remember right, he have another late, very young girls inside the craft mm -hmm. who is very sick. Mm -hmm. And right. she, he remember he goes into the craft and saw this sick lady, sick young girl sitting there. And then he had to put a, put a hand behind her back. And the alien put their hand behind his back. Seems like they're transferring some kind of energy to save these girls. And then later on, they find these girls, right? Um, and don't forget, all this investigation, no matter he did uh, the lie detecting, he also went to check the body. They find a the little girl. The girl was sick, very sick before, but she's just healed in no reason without any, any there, medicine. There's many pictures of him taking the lie detector right. test. But don't forget one thing. This test is done by officials. Mm. These tests are done by police and uh, military. Right. He did uh, all these tests. He remembered this girl's phrase. So he had to do the drawing of the of the girl. They try and find this girl. That's right. That's right. They that's all right. done that's it in right. police station. That's right. Police, that's police right. department. So the government is actually really involved into this. That's it. You know, the right. last person I want a polygraph test from who is the Chinese military. I don't want that polygraph, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want that polygraph. It seems like um, they want to know. It seems like I, I, I'm not talking about politics, but it seems like um, the United States and China uh, for the last 20 or 30 years started to get friendlier and friendlier and friendlier and things seemed like they were doing okay. Is there a way to get back to that? Is there a way? Can we be friends again? Hmm. Let me ask you this. If, okay, let me, okay. I, I have to, I have to answer you. By this. So if you understand what I'm talking about, then that's great. Let's just say I'm your good friend right now. Mm -hmm. What if one day, what if one day you find out this Chuck Fay is actually a really bad person and lying to you and betray you? Mm -hmm. Will you be friends again? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. But here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> these are made in China. Gosh. These are made in China. Yeah, but I doubt that they ever get made anywhere else. And so much of my life, look around this room. Half of it is China. So, yeah. It makes my life wonderful. Mm -hmm. China, China. Okay. China, China, right. China, 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 right. China. Right? Look, look, look. That's right. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm, yeah. Oh, those are German. Okay. But, oh, yeah. Someone tell me to have to be careful. Right. But soon we'll be making somewhere else. Right? You think so? Yeah, I think so. You think definitely so? believe so. Ah, oh, man. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. Let's take our break right Ooh. now. Chuck, <laughs> it's hot in here. It's hot. hot. Oh, man. Who are those guys at the door? No, no, no I'm just no. playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay with right. us. Stay with us, everybody. Back. Please visit all of our sponsors. We're taking a quick break here. All of the links are below. We'll be right back.
Hey everybody, it's Billy Carson, also known as Forbidden Knowledge. I want to talk to you about a very special event coming up July 30th, 2023, the Forbidden Conscious Awards. We're going to honor people who have been contributing to the conscious community for decades. People that you know and love that have helped you get to higher levels of thought and consciousness and awareness. It's going to be a live in-person event, but seats are going to sell out very fast. You want to make sure you're there in person. And guess what? You can help vote for the winners. Voting is available on ForbiddenKnowledge.com. And the categories are going to be social media influencer, podcast slash radio host, TV host, actor, director, producer, entrepreneurs, health and wellness, philanthropists, authors, field researchers, archaeologists, space anomaly hunters, and of course, a lifetime achievement award. I'll be your key note speaker that night at the Forbidden Conscious Awards. We have celebrity guests performing. We'll have a halftime show where we're actually going to perform music for you. And don't forget about the pre-event mixer where if you buy a box seat, you'll be in the VIP section and you also have private access to a VIP mixer with celebrity guests. Shake hands, break bread, network, and then walk the red carpet with us and take amazing photos. It's going to be a night to remember. You don't want to forget this. Make sure you hurry up and get your tickets because they're selling out very fast. I want to see you there. Forbidden Conscious Awards 2023. On Saturday, April 1st, that's right, April Fool's Day 2023, I will be hosting the Parapod Festival at the Hyatt Regency right here in Valencia, California. It's a live one-day podcast awards. It's a film festival. It's a full-on media event. We're going to have sky watching. There's going to be a Lifetime Achievement Award presented to Linda Moulton Howe. Right now, you can submit your podcast, your film, your TV series, any of your paranormal media for consideration. You can do all of that on the links below. For info and tickets, go to parapodfilmfest.com. That's parapodfilmfest.com. April 7th through the 14th, 2023, I'll be hosting and presenting on the Hidden Secrets Seminar at Sea Cruise. From Los Angeles to the Mexican Riviera on the Navigator of the Seas. That's right, up top, a giant water slide. You've got to check out the Navigator of the Seas. It's amazing. We've got Scott Walter, Adam Apollo, Nick Pope, Brad Olson, Vivian Chauvet, Jason Shirka, Robert Grant, Ruben Langdon, and another 12 amazing speakers and presenters. It's all simple to do. Just visit divinetravels.com forward slash hidden secrets 2023. You know you want to go on a cruise with me. River Moon Coffee, makers of the Fade to Black Blend. Truly the best coffee on planet Earth. Just visit rivermoonwellness.com or, or their Amazon store. It's all simple to do. You can check out the Fade to Black Blend, the Game Changer Blend, or any of their Black Moon Wellness products. It's the only coffee I drink. It is the best, and it's Doc. Again, rivermoonwellness.com wow we got to jump straight back into it that was so fast here we are we are back this is fade to black chuck Faye from hong kong you got to pull up chuck pull up right. chuck. yeah pull up chuck yeah, there's someone say i have i'm very nervous to say something wrong <laughs> <laughs> well you know <clears throat> um here what what is your take on do you think that the United States government is sitting on secrets about the UFOs and ET contact? Oh, definitely. Definitely, I believe so. There are so many you can see that there's, there's so many footprints you see they're they're trying to cover up no matter what. But what I believe these days is um another another theory that people put out like a false flag false flag invasion from alien from yeah like like what uh you, you know you remember what uh what they mentioned about the, the ufo affecting all this blue beam blue, blue beam project you know they faking out the ufo sighting uh, oh, so it, it, do you do you do you think that the United States government will will have disclosure? Do you think that they will reveal what they know? Mm. I think they will reveal a little bit by a little bit. No, not the full disclosure. May takes 
few steps to do, like a little bit this year and a little bit next year. Look, all these stories, people who have alien, they contact, they encounter with aliens, right? They communicate with them. There are tons of reports. People not only see the UFO, they see the entities itself as, as well. But all these days, what we can pick up from the news is only the sighting. Only the, those few videos that disclose from military, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That TikTok, TikTok UFOs, that gimbal video. Mm -hmm. We only saw those. Nothing else. Not nothing else at all. But there are so many people who have contact with all these entities, but none, none of the stories showing that. So, what I believe is they they will not they will be no full disclosure at all. I don't think so, because it's gonna be a big impact to people who if what if one day if the government telling okay all these alien stories are real all these alien abductions are real then who who's gonna in charge for that who's gonna pay for the whatever loss there's owe? gonna be a, a a few a few court cases that come out of that for sure um the Wilson Davis docs right mm -hmm. when 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 those came out and you start to analyze uh, a few, or the, you know, all the pages have something in, interesting on it. But when you look at the section where Admiral Wilson says that he came out to an aerospace company, he never named who it was, but it was probably Lockheed uh, and, mm -hmm. and Skunk Works. And he came out here and had a meeting with them. And it was disclosed to him at that meeting that they had a craft that they thought could fly. These are the words in the document. You've read the document. Right. Um, but they haven't gotten it to fly yet. Mm. Now, if that statement is true, that that event actually happened, right. you were there today. I took you down there. Right. I took you to Lockheed yeah. Skunk Works. That's right. right. Yeah. And um, to think that driving around that building today mm -hmm. uh, like you did, that right there could be engineering uh, technology of an alien spacecraft going on behind those walls. Right. Um, and shouldn't the government be sharing? Why, why keep that a secret? And it's just, you know, you, you went there. It's a mm -hmm. mile from my house. You can tell That's everybody. True. It's right down the street. That's true. That's right, Chuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you saw the skunk works. It's amazing. It, it's amazing, right? That, that, that right there in that building, if that document is telling the truth mm -hmm. and it's accurate, and I believe there's, you know, I think that it's probably more true than not, that right down the street from our house, shouldn't shouldn't the government right. share that information with the world? Well, I think they may share the information, but not now. Remember what we are using the technology right now for the citizen? People who can use the technology, which the technology was there like 50 years ago, right? But the military using it for a military purpose, not for the citizen. Like the drone we are flying, like the, um, the gyroscope in our phone, right. in our smartphone, it was there. It was there for a long time, but they don't just show it. They don't just share it to everybody until the technology was become kind of old. They got some new replacement for the technology. Otherwise, they won't disclose it to everyone. So if there is the UFOs, if they have the technology like alien re reproduction vehicle, what they call it, mm -hmm. well, think about it. We don't have to need the petrol to fly. We don't need the car. We don't need a border, right? You we can don't just, need gas. You don't need <laughs> gas. You don't need, you don't, there's no border between countries, right? You can just go to China, like five minutes from here, go to China, go to Hong Kong, go to anywhere, go to Japan. You just land in the middle of nowhere. And then you're there. You don't need a border. You don't need a passport. Like you said, you don't need gas. Think about all this impact too. The whole world, right? That is why you heard a lot of story. People who invented a 
new technology or new energy system. Like you can run the car by water, you can run the car by the air, by the hydrogen. Then you don't need the petrol, you don't need the gas. And then those people who invented the, the technology either become a patent or the people die. So it happened so many times, right? So if they have the technology, I, which I believe they have, but they will not disclose it. Uh, not now, I guess, maybe, maybe years later, maybe they find something even faster than the, the UFO they invent then they will disclose it. Do you... Um, That's one of my beliefs. Well, and, 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 and here's the thing, Chuck. Right. <laughs> and here's the thing. Um, it, the way it, you smile, it, I have a bad feeling about it. <laughs> <laughs> In that, you know, if, if the United States has got one, mm -hmm. then Russia's got one. Right. India's got one. Right. Right? Israel's got one. The United Kingdom's got one. Maybe... Even Canada, and yeah. and so um, if if we can't fly them, probably nobody else can. But you can get ideas from the technology that you're looking at, right? Right. And yeah. so I'm not saying that China has a craft, you know, from another world, but mm. they pro they they can't be any different than Russia or the United States or any other country in the world. Right. There have been crash retrievals reported in Mexico and in, in Chile, Argentina, Brazil, right? right. Uh, 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 the United Kingdom. And and it's it's not a unique situation just to the United States, right? So everybody, um, and so if they, if we assume that everybody does, do they share that information? with other countries trying to get these craft to work or are they all keeping the secrets to themselves? Um, kind of like the movie Arrival. You remember? Arrival, it, yes. Uh, yeah. That was a really good example. It's a very good movie. Yeah. I love it. A very good example of the different countries. And, and around human beings have to work together to solve problems. They right? have to work together and nobody wanted to work together. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening right now. <laughs> In the world, Nobody wants to share. Nobody wants to share information of technology with the other countries, right? Nobody, nobody wants to let the advance go to somebody else, right? They want to keep their technology so they can be the number one in the world. Everybody do the same thing. I remember I saw there's a piece of article from China, from China military actually, that probably 2005, they, there's a, a aeros, aerospace show in uh, China, and then they, they show a new generation of flying uh, technology, they put it this way, which is like a olive color plane, and the shape is like a triangle shape, but pretty much like uh, what we saw from uh, the Randall Sam Forest. Mm -hmm. Remember in the Randall Sam Forest, there's a, a fake UFO they put in the forest, which is like an iron shape, right? Like a triangle, like a boat. I remember they showed this kind of technology in China many years ago. And they said, this is a new technology that fly. When I look at the pictures, when I look at the craft itself, it just looks so close to, remember there's a flying saucers that built by the armies from uh, the States mm -hmm. many years ago, but they can only live up like probably like five feet from the ground. Those were made in Canada. Uh, Canada, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Avro. They yeah, called the, it the, the Avro car. They called it uh, flying saucers, right? Yeah. It's pretty much the same thing like that, right? What uh, China disclosed, I'm, I, I can say it because I can see, I, I saw the other media from UK, they mentioned it. So you see, they tried to do something, but that is well i think i think they they just picked the wrong they just picked the wrong idea to do it right so it would be like flying exactly the same as the side flying saucer only five feet from the ground it right. won't be able to bring any 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 missile or anything any weapons i don't think so so think about it if there is a country if they want to 
um, how do I say it? They want to tell everybody they can do things. They will make up a lot of things, but may not be working. Yeah, that's right. You only have to give an engineer the idea. Right. right? If, if we go back to uh, uh, Dick Tracy, mm-hmm. right, the, the, the watches, the TV watch, you know, that was in a comic book. You was, only have to show a smart person that. An engineer, give them the idea, it's going to get done. Now, today, um, as crazy as this would have been, I keep going back. Smartphones, um, we have gotten so acclimated to what this actually is, right? Because if this was in a movie in, in 1960, Right, I mean, that's true. that'll never happen. A computer watching a movie on your phone while right. you're talking and texting in your email, and 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 computers and access to all of the computers in the world and all the world's knowledge and everything. Else. Just right there, that, that, stop with that. You that's know, a miracle. Did, many yeah, years they ago. didn't even take it that far on Star Trek, if you think about it. They had, <laughs> that's the, true. They had the they had the communicator. Well, but they the, don't see each other. They don't see no, each other. They, they say, me up, no Scotty. Team. That's right. There was no team. That was a walkie-talkie. Right. And <laughs> and, and so, uh, uh, you remember the medical scanner? What did they call that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's as far as they... They didn't have a smartphone in Star Trek. No. No, it's taken things... Uh, not uh, even in Star Wars. No, not even in Star Wars. No. <laughs> Think yeah, about right, it. Right, 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 right. Hey, um, I'm going to share... I'm just going to do this because this is one of my favorite uh, pictures that right. uh, that I have. And um, uh, I'm going to pop it up on the screen for everybody. Uh, Chuck, what are we looking at here? That was me first time in Great Wall in China. And I was thinking, uh, well, I was thinking, well, this is my first time in a Great Wall. And uh, I want to taking pictures with it. But when I think about it, I'm thinking, what if I put the pictures with a faded black t-shirt on it and I send it to you and you probably the only pic, you only have this, probably this is the only picture you have in China. And then let you know you're in China, right? You look at the pictures, you know, you, you know, I'm in China. Yeah. It's either the Eiffel Tower or the Great Wall, right? right? That's Those, it's your two choices, right? Yes. Where there's no question That's right. about where you are at. And then my wife asking me, why are you wearing T-shirts of Fate to Black? You don't wear T-shirts of MJ13 on it. I said, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I just think this may be cool. You may like it. Chuck sends me this, Jimmy, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, dude, this is um, uh, it's it's such a cool photograph. I have the ori- this is the original, right? I didn't crop it, I didn't modify it, or make you look pretty or anything like that. That no is, matter you do, you don't make me cre- look pretty <laughs> anyway. That is the original image right there. Chuck right. Faye, the Great Wall of China, wearing a fade to black. Isn't t-shirt. it cool, man? It's one of my favorite, favorite, <laughs> favorite, favorite images. And uh, there it is. Uh, and 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 thank you for sending me that. Um, so, man, I've got too many monitors here. I don't know where my mice are. Okay, so we're back over here. Okay. okay. Um, the uh, the subject of you know something like Rendlesham, mm-hmm. right? Where. Um, uh, and I understand the dividing line between Hong Kong and, and mainland China and 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 those obstacles that are in front of you. But if you had is uh, the Hong Kong military, mm-hmm. right, it, which is now Chinese. That's right. Okay, but they're in Hong Kong. They're in Hong Kong. But so it's still a Chinese situation there, right? And is it the same thing with Taiwan? No, Taiwan has their own military. Military, right? So that is government. different than Taiwan, or different than Hong Kong. That's right. It's yeah. a different situation. Totally. So, um, but Hong Kong, and you'll understand where I'm going with this. 
Hong Kong has its own media and distribution. You still have Google, you still have Twitter, you still have Facebook. That's true. But you go across the water, and it, it, all of that is cut off from the internet, right? Yeah, okay. but how much longer we can have those? I cannot answer. Okay, but so mm -hmm. Taiwanese military has a tic tac situation. Oh yes, an Arendelshim situation. Right. Then that's going to be talked about publicly. That's true. With and that would be broadcast in Hong Kong. Uh, not really. News from Taiwan will not goes to Hong Kong in the mainstream media. Really? No. But you would get it through the internet. Yeah, we will get it from the internet. What if the internet will has to be censored mm -hmm. one day, like the mainland? Right. Then we won't be able to get it unless we use some other method to do it. But right. which is become it will become illegal back then. What if that happens? Have, have there been any? Um, would you know of any a uh, tic tac? like incidents with the Taiwanese Navy or Air Force? No. I am the only first time, only first time to hear it right now when you mention it about the Taiwanese Army, they, they have a tic tac situation. No, I, I'm not saying they do. Don't get me in trouble. Okay. Don't get to, <laughs> Chuck, Chuck wants to share the trouble. He wants to share the pressure. <laughs> Share the pressure. <laughs> now, I mean, in, in, if there's case like this, we can only find out find out from the from the internet, not from the mainstream media. The mainstream media are pretty much like, well, they will put up information where the government wants you to know. Now, well, okay, okay, but, but they completely shut down the others. Completely, there, there were reports here. Uh, about two years ago, right? That China, 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 China had started their own UFO task force. Yes, within the military. Can you confirm that? Uh, yes, from what I know, yes. From what I can tell, yes. And um, there's something I want to share with you. Don't get funny, don't get me in trouble. No, 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 no. No, it won't get you in trouble. Okay. Remember when I mentioned. Uh, uh, many years ago, when uh, when you talk about UFO, when you study about UFO, they they look at it as a scientific, no science perspective, right? Like something that can fly with high technology. They want to know the technology. But as all we know, there are a lot of psychic connection between the UFO sighting. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of spiritual pushback in the UFO sighting fails, but they refuse to talk about it. The conscious connection. No, they don't want, they don't allow to talk. Put it this way, many years ago, probably like 2018, I went to Beijing, one very cold sub, uh, winter, which is like close to right after Christmas, and they have a UFO conference for two days in Beijing. And I went up there. What? When was this? Uh, probably 2018, I guess. I do remember you talking about this. Right. That you were going to Beijing for a UFO conference. Yeah, but I haven't told you the part, second part of it. Nobody do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, I remember this. Okay, go ahead. Go and ahead. Then, uh, when uh, two, two, two nights, two days, full days for the... A UFO conference. I remember we have John DeSosa in there. Yeah, yeah. A few people from the United States went over, and, uh, and I had him on the show. Okay, Michael keep... Sala. Yeah, Michael and, uh, Sala. Laura, uh, Laura Eisenhower. Yeah, three of them. Uh huh. Went yep. to Beijing. Yep. Together, and I went there, <laughs> and they were so surprised because when I met John DeSosa, and he was like, "Oh, Chuck," and then coming over and give me a big hug, and then only that they they knew who I am. I remember I went there during this conference for two days. They have information from like John DeSosa talks about the FBI X Files. We have Michael Seller talks about exopolitics. We have Laura Eisenhower talks about doing her thing, doing yeah. her thing, yeah. right? Yeah, right. And right. then we have another Chinese lady who is a speaker who talks about her um, experience, her encounter experience, which is very spiritual spiritual concepts, spiritual ideas, a lot of message, which is belongs to spiritual sign. And then after that event, 
like probably two weeks after the event, there are scientists coming out and try to attack the um, spiritual speakers, right? And then what caught after that, and then it ends up the lady who's, who talks these spiritual subjects, she has to cut off her social media. She has to delete all the files, delete all the posts she put up in the internet. Think about it. Think about it. If somebody tell you a liar, you don't have to do all this shutdown operation, right? You don't have to cut off. You don't have to delete all your posts. You just shut up. I don't say it. But she delete all of all of things, all the things she put up so far all these years. She just totally closed the account of YouTube, closed the account of Facebook or whatever. They, she just shut off everything. So. What I can tell is they will allow us to talk about it in the scientific or technology perspective. That's okay. That's playing in by the rules. But but spiritual sign, they will put it like they, they treat it like a religion. There's no religion in China, right? In the communist country. So somebody like uh uh you know that wants to do a CE five type of calling in of craft right put it this way then um uh, if you talk about ufo technology you're fine if you talk about ce5 you talk about spiritual connection with entities that's that's a no-no really really yeah and and can could you talk about that right now or is that a zone you well don't i can go i can talk about it right now here i don't have trouble i can talk about spiritual connection in hong kong Right now, it's still okay, but not in China. So, um, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck pulled up uh, to the bunker today in an RV. Right. So he's rented an RV. He's over here for a month, and he's driving around the Western United States, uh, looking looking for UFOs. <laughs> no more than that. <laughs> more than it, but now you know. So that's so he and it, it, it's it's a nice RV too, by the way, and you just went to Giant Rock. Right. And so you spent five days uh, in an RV um, in Giant Rock. Pretty, pretty cool place. And I'm going to say a very spiritual place. It's a very powerful place. Mm -hmm. um, was that something that uh, you thought about doing was the conscious connection and a CE5 type of approach? Well, when I start my tour, when I plan my tour, my wife, a few of my good friends, they asked, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? I was telling them, like, honestly, I have no idea. I don't know where I'm going to go. But one of my friends tell me, okay, if you don't know, I just I just have a reason. I just have a vision. No, I have to come. But I don't know for what reason. I don't have a, any place I want to go. Like, originally, I was planning to drive into a forest mm. and then try to find some probably some footage from a Bigfoot or dog man or whatever, right? I was being screamed by a Bigfoot in East City Ranch many years ago. So I was kind of follow the flow. I don't know where to go. But then I stay a few days in Giant Rock. Well, two days I was stuck in the sand. <laughs> I don't mean to do it, but I was stuck in the sand because it's too dark. <laughs> He's in the middle of the desert. In the middle of in, nowhere. In an RV uh, and gets stuck in the sand. For two days. And nobody, and, and, but you had food and water. I have food and water. And you got rescued. And I got pretty nice signal in there so I can do the broadcast at night when I <laughs> hear something scratching the door outside in the middle of nowhere. It's just all dark and cold yeah. and windy. Yeah. And I was in the middle of dream and something just scratched the car. No, and then I hear like whoo, whoo, that kind of voice. I, I don't know whether I'm dreaming. I don't what? know whether I hear that. I'm hearing this for the first time. Right? Okay, you didn't tell me this. Yep. Okay, wait, 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 <laughs> wait. You're you're in the Mojave Desert. Right. You're in, uh, you're outside of Landers. You're in Giant Rock, right. which is once you get a mile away from Landers, mm -hmm. there's no help. You no, are, there is. You are in the desert. That's right. Okay, so you got this giant RV. You get stuck in the sand. You can't move. Nobody's coming to rescue you. That's the scary. You part. are sleeping at night, 
and something is scratching the walls of the RV right. from the outside. Yeah, on the corner because on the bed, the bed is actually at the back side of the of the RV, right? Yeah, and it parked in the next to a corner. So I was leaving at night, and I don't know what crossing it. Probably my dream. Probably I was just too 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 scary or whatever. I scare whatever because it's stuck there, right? If I if the if the vehicle is on move, then if something happened, I can just drive away. But don't forget, it's stuck. <laughs> and then I was stupid oh, enough. Man. I was stupid enough when they stuck. I keep on pressing on the paddle, and then the the wheels is actually sink into the sand uh, yeah, completely. That's, that's what happens, right? Yeah. So I won't be able to get out. And there's somebody calls by, passed by, and he said, "I I I probably will see what I can do." But they never said we, they really come back. And the one guy who said, I will come back tomorrow, but you have to spend the night in the desert. And I was like, oh, my God. It was so dark outside. It was windy. And then the, the, the vehicle is falling apart. You know, the corners goes away. The window on the top goes away. I have to climb up and seal the window by an envelope or whatever. And you're alone. You're alone. by yourself. And I feel like I'm in Mars. Yeah, right? Mars. Yeah, it is Mars. It, it is, is Mars. Mars. It is Mars. And then no one can help you. No one can hear my scream if something <laughs> happened. Yeah. Oh, and then there, in the middle of the night, there's something scratching oh, man. the corner of the RV, and I was awake. And okay, was were, like, you, were you scared? I, uh, of course I'm you, scared. You're terrified. Of course I'm scared. And then I have to peel, look out the window and make sure there's nothing out there. And then I open the other window and then open the window all four sides. And I checked, there's nothing out there except you can see the moon, the moon shine on the on the land, and you saw Did nothing. Did you have a flashlight? I have a flashlight, and it took me like 15 minutes to, to strong enough, to brave enough to open the door and just peel out. And I use my, they're lucky. I'm I've got, lucky. I've got extra flashlights if you, you want some for the. No, I, and then I brought two. Here, I brought two. There's a Jimmy Church fade to black flashlight. Oh, really? Yeah, there you go. Okay, this is more important. Okay. <laughs> anyway, then I have to make sure someone share my experience. So, I, but I'm lucky I got a pretty good signal over there. So I just live on Facebook and turn on my flashlight <laughs> and. Show people how scary that is. Yes. And then I walk a corner. I walk around with the RV and my audience say, don't open the door. Don't get out. Go no. back to the car. I've seen this movie, Chuck. You never get out of the RV. Yeah. You don't do it. You stay in the RV. But you went outside. I went outside. I want to see. Do, was there any uh, footprints? No. No, I'm alone. What the hell was scratching? <laughs> I don't know. Probably my dream. I, I would think I would like to think that were there dream. claw marks? No, <laughs> that would be loss of deposit. <laughs> yeah, loss of deposit. <laughs> but I I scratch it anyway, so I lost my deposit anyway. Uh, There's a yeah. big scratch on the pawn on the corner. But anyway, um, I was thinking the other day after I was rescued rescued from the sand, and then I parked somewhere next to the rocks, and I spent another two nights there because it's so quiet, so beautiful. Beautiful, and you see thousands, billions of stars on the sky. And I was lucky enough because the guy who saved me, his name is Marlo, and he's uh, from Canada. He just drives six months in uh, the States and then go back to Canada. He's been doing that for seven years. He got a big truck, and we sit down together next to the campfire, and he, came. he happens to be a very spiritual person, extremely spiritual, and he described law of attraction and the relationship between law of attraction and quantum entanglement wow think about it this is crazy yeah that's awesome by a campfire under by the stars campfire. at giant, giant rock that's right that's right that's beautiful. that's a very moving experience very 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 spiritual and when we look up at the star we look up the sky there's so many things flying between stars so many mm -hmm. and we saw it together uh with naked eye naked eyes that's because the best it's way. so bright yeah but after late late minute, like after midnight, the sun, the, the moon comes up, and then the star goes away, uh -huh. and then you see miles and miles of sand with no one next to you. You could have walking naked in the desert, and nobody knows. You well, can, you can do you, whatever did you, you did. You walk naked no. in the desert? No. Okay. Well, you, well, next time. Next time. Next time. I, I've never done it. Yeah. I would freak the lizards out. They'd be like, "Whoa." <laughs> Put something on, bro. 
man. Uh, so, um, uh, <laughs> somebody just asked, this is from Stargazer. Right. Um, Jimmy, please ask Chuck about pyramids in China. And uh, th- I think that that is a subject, um, again, I don't want to get you in trouble, but this, I think that they're, they're, for some reason, the Chinese government doesn't mm. want the world to know about the pyramids that are all over China. Yeah. Giant, humongous, beautiful yes. temples and, and pyramids. Right. There, there are a few. When people ask me about the pyramids in China, I do a little research and I find out there are quite a few of them. Yeah, there's but, quite a few. Yes, quite a few of them. But I, it seems like the government tried to, they really do try to cover that up. Right. They let the plants, they let yeah, the trees. The trees are all of, they want. Now, if you look up, if you look up to the those shapes, those mountains right now, these become an ordinary mountain. Mm-hmm. But probably like 30 years before, there's those places you can see the when the plant is still start to growing, when the plant not yet become a forest on the top of the hill, they, you can tell that it's a there's a pyramid there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then most of, a, a lot of places, they have a structure, they have fences, you know, they're closing the area. So nobody can really go up, go up to that place. Go, nobody can actually walk up to the pyramids. Quite a few of them. They're, they're, they're huge. They're huge. The, um, uh, there were some scientists, um, and and so forth uh, from the United States and around the world um, in the 40s and 50s that, you know, still had access back in the day of, of flying around China and, and doing things and, and stuff. And they see the pyramid. They're taking pictures out of the plane windows, right? Right. And those, those when you look at those pictures today, um, which are beautiful, wonderful pictures, it's the, like the last time that ever happened, right? Uh, yeah. That they clamp that mm-hmm. down, and uh, when mm-hmm. when China did the big reveal of I forget the the king uh, who's uh, who built those. What's that? The the king who built those. Uh, the, the one with the mercury pools and the right. uh, um, the terracotta army. I forgot. Right, uh, how beautiful that was in the terracotta army, and right. and the and they publicized that, right? Of course, and, and they did, and those images, and when you stop and you think about how big of a temple that was, and and the amount of effort that it takes to build um, and sculpt all of those terracotta figures, each one had its own face, right? Yeah. There weren't duplicates; no. each one was unique. Um, and it was an amazing discovery. That's the last you ever heard of it, right? That's I mean, it was like, just like they just clamped down. I, I think they're still they're still trying to take some more. I, th- I what I can tell, no, from the some of the information like three years ago, I think they would they never stopped trying to take something else from um, the terracotta grave area. They try keep on doing it. They keep on finding new. Uh, new area under the ground, right? But uh, they find it, they do a lot of investigate in there, but they don't really open it up to public. Or they open some little bit by little bit. Yeah, a little, really little. Mention it. You, you can't do it. You can't do it. Um, is, those become archaeologists, right? Is there, is there, uh, I, I, I don't want to sound stupid here. No, but uh, there there must be tourism in China, right? right? I can go to the Great Wall. Yes, you can. Yeah, right. They would let. Where else, uh, as a tourist, could I go in China? Well, I think you can go to most of the place. Yes, you can. I mean, uh, as a tourist, right? You can go to you can go to Great Wall. You can go to quite a few many places, but you don't go to the military facilities like well i mean there are there are facilities in all over the place in china and their military you have to have a military clearance to get in there right but, but what about the pyramids can i see those some of them you can yeah what i can tell yeah probably, probably one or two pyramid you can get there like as a tourist but uh, quite a lot of them which is all sealed up right with fences and you cannot get even close to that. 
Is there now? This is where you're going to tell me you can't answer me. So, but is there? Uh, does Does China have its own Area 51? Hmm. I believe so. I believe so. They have a quite a few uh, military facilities, which is like Air Force facility. But I'm not too sure. Well, because when when people who works in the Area 51, they can come out and. Even though they're dangerous, but they still tell the yeah, I used to work there. I see whatever under the ground. I see aliens. I see the I saw the three craft floating, holding, hovering on the ground. They people can say it without getting in trouble. Right. What sort of trouble, right? But in China, I don't th- hear anyone who used to work in a secret military base for whatever purpose, right? <laughs> right? And then come out and then tell, I used to work there. No, they don't. Do it's it. not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Well, we even have, um, not to that degree, but we have the same issues here in the United States. Um, yeah, but Bob Lassar still live, right? Well, yeah, well, <laughs> see, and that that's a great point. Um, even with Area 51, Groom Lake, right. it's not like there, there, are, there are tens of thousands of people that have worked there. Right. A mere handful have come out and talked about it. Most don't. Um, right here in in my community, where all of these uh, extremely sensitive areas, which are right up the street, and it is Air Force Plan 42 and NASA, Northrop Grumman and, mm-hmm. and Lockheed, um, those facilities are right there. Right. People don't talk about that. The, not talking about the Edwards Air Force Base, right at the street, right? right? That's a testing center. That's a testing center. Right. All right? They're not walking around talking about what's going on there. Um, no. And so if we have those same, you know, layers of protection of, of you know, secrecy and, and what goes on there, right? Um, it's got to be way worse in China. I mean, if we have difficulty getting information here, that's true. In in China, it's got to be just the same, just much more difficult. Yeah, but think about it. There's how many UFO ufologists in the states? How many people who talks about UFOs talks about Area 51 in the states, mm-hmm. and no one just disappear, right? That we know of. <laughs> well, that we know of, right? Well, you and I, you and I have about 15 more minutes of freedom. Okay, that's it. We're, uh, we'll we'll be disappeared tonight, you know. Really? After the show, after the show, I had um, so what I stopped doing, even though I have diarrhea of the mouth, man. I love telling stories. I do. I love telling stories. I see stuff out here all yeah. the time. Right. I don't jump on the air and go. I saw this today. I took this picture. I'm posting this on. on no, I do not do that. Right. Um, it it's it, it's it's not cool. It's not. There are uh, you know there are things. Uh, there are lives, uh, jobs, careers, people, things, and there is a way of life out here that needs. There's a zone that needs to be respected. Mm-hmm. It just it just has to be that way, you know. So no, I'm not going to do that. But I have seen some crazy some crazy ass shit out here. One of the um, one of the craziest things, Chuck, when I was out here looking for a house, mm-hmm. and now I've told the story many times, but I don't know if you've heard it. So I'm going to tell the short version. Right. So um, I hadn't moved here yet, and I was meeting my uh, real estate agent to to look at property. Right. And I'm staying at a hotel mm-hmm. just north of here. And so I, I get up. Uh, it's about 10 o'clock at night, and I just feel the urge for in and out Burger. <laughs> right. Okay. Have you done right. that yet? Uh, yes. I okay. Do. Pretty incredible, isn't it? Very. It, it, it's, it's incredible, right? That's true. Okay. I had that urge. And when, when that gets here, nothing else is going to do except for an in and out Burger. Right. So it's 10 o'clock at night. I come out, and, and I'm standing in front of the I'm walking over to the Jeep. And at that moment, I went, man. Edwards is right there. Mm-hmm. It's right there. 
I'm going to Edwards. So I jump in the Jeep, get the GPS out, and and I and I find a road, and I and I'm south of the base, the closest road I can get to the base. I didn't realize at that point that I was in the middle of the desert. I didn't know. It was at night. So I drive out and I see where I'm at. I'm south of the base. I pull over on this road. And I just go across the street, and uh, I'm in the middle of nowhere, um, and I'm just looking at Edwards. I can see all the lights, you know, out. It's a couple of miles away, and it's twinkling and stuff. And right above it, it's just black sky, and and all of a sudden, this thing goes, this ring of lights. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? A ring of lights. No. And, and before, uh, it, before it did that, it was like staticky. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how to explain it. It was like static on a TV in in this area, and uh, and then it goes. Brrr. I'm like, what? And so I'm standing there. It was like a couple of minutes later, or a minute later, two minutes later. I'm just like, and it does it again. It goes staticky. It's in the black sky, static in the. Brrr. I was like, get mm. out! I take take out my phone. I'm freaking. I get my phone on video. I'm ready to go. No, yeah. and that was it. That was all that. And so I, I wait for like 20 minutes. I get back in the Jeep. I'm driving back. And what I'm thinking about on the drive back um, was it must have been like lights on top of a tower for the aircraft, warning mm -hmm. lights on a radio tower. It must have been that. You know, I wasn't thinking UFOs. No. So I drive, drive back to the hotel. I, I get up the next day and uh, didn't really think a whole lot about it. Uh, I wasn't thinking ET yet. So um, the next morning I get up, I had breakfast and, mm -hmm. and I went out. Uh, I'm standing in the parking lot. There's my Jeep. And I'm looking at, oh, man, that thing last night. I'm going back. So I jump in the Jeep. That's 10, 10, 10, 30 in the morning. Drive back. I got my GPS. I go back and I pull up to where I, I found my tire tracks in the dirt. Right. I pull over. I go across the street. I see my footprints in the dirt from the night before. And I look up and I see Edwards, except there was nothing in in the sky. There's no no structure. No, 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 no. No building. No and I was kind no. of, I mean, there were towers there. I went back uh, maybe a month later with, with somebody, uh, went back to that same spot, and I was trying to describe to them what I had seen. And even when um, I went back that second time, mm -hmm. it even seemed lower right. the second time that I went back. But anyway, above it, it was just the mountains and blue sky. So, and I'm standing there picturing where it was in the sky the night before, and it was just, it was up in the sky. Yeah, so what was it? I don't know. Well, yeah, I remember when I, one of the one of the sighting I have is in the Easy to Ranch, uh -huh. right? Uh, James Carolyn. Uh -huh. I went up to make a documentary for a local TV um, back to 2018, I guess. So we went up there. It's pretty cold. We're pretty, it's close to winter. So it's really cold up back there. Um, and I go up there with um, one of the copywriter in the team, in the crew, and she doesn't believe in UFO at all. Even she took this job. She do all this writing, but she doesn't believe in it at all. Okay, so she's the first one to go to the bed, and she doesn't want to spend time outside watching the sky. But when we get there, and uh, she suddenly just poked me on the shoulder and said, hey, Chuck, what is that? What is that thing on the on the sky? There's the red lights. Like, uh, I, I would say, at the first sight, I thought there's a plane, but there's no blinking light. And we both look at the same thing together. And that light, which is like, uh, how, how do I explain? It was like white in the middle, but surrounded is red. Like like you, you like Darth Vader's lightsaber, right? The lightsaber is white in the middle, but surrounded by red light. Mm. It just stuck there. It just stay stable in the in the sky without moving. But all of a sudden, it start moving forwards slowly, and then all of a sudden, it was like, and then it's gone. When it start do the zigzags, that me and the copywriter was like, "Oh God, what is that?" Mm. And then after that, she realized that's the real UFO sighting. And then 
she become really interested <laughs> after everybody goes and she stay outside. Now you saw stuff. this yourself. I saw it myself. And I saw it together with her. And the zigzag when that happens, um, I've only seen like the real zigzag one time. Right. Um, that changes things. Yes. That changes things. What in straight line, this, that, night, you know, okay. Could be anything yeah, fun to look be. at. I love it. No question about it. But a six act. Yes. When, when we're done tonight, we're going to go, um, we're going to go out. Uh, I've got a couple pairs of night vision uh, goggles and uh, we're going to go outside and, and see what we can see. But, but things in a straight line, fun. Mm -hmm. I love it. Right. You don't see it without it. You see it with it. Cool. When you see something zigzag, that is terrible. That's a game changer. That is a new thing. I mean, you know, nothing can fly like that because it was so fast when they do the zigzag. Uh huh. Right. You're talking about miles away on the uh -huh. sky, yep. right? Yep. It was like, yep. And then ghosts dis disappear, but no sound, silence completely. It was like, oh my God. I mean, there's nothing you can explain. Look at, look at this comment here. Right. It can be justified until zigzags. That's exactly That's right. That's yeah. exact hundred percent. When you see something go zzz, 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 it's like, wait a minute. And and when we are the, the the point that you just made is the best one. We're talking about big chunks of sky. We're talking about mile. These zigzags are mile long zigzags, miles long zigzags that happen in an instant. Think about it. You do zigzags. And then it goes straight and it disappears. And what Everything did, happens in one second. What does that do with G forces, right? What are we talking about? A hundred times the amount of G forces that that we normally encounter, that right. would crush bones, right? Definitely. That would crush us. Yeah, and you can't breathe in there. Your blood would Nothing. stop in the middle. Boil. Everywhere. Your blood would boil. Yeah. <laughs> and you're completely out of function. Right? So, so what would explain that? So are we talking about something that's pilotless or that they have a way to control the effects of gravity on the inside? I think I think they have a good control on the gravity. Look at that. We have drones all these days. We, they, they don't have pilots, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't have a drone that can do zip sack like this in No, we second. don't. We don't. No, because it's flying with the air. Yes. Right? But what we know about the flying saucers or the un unidentified flying objects, they're not flying with hot air. They're not flying with engine. They're flying with probably... And they have to have... Yeah, Chuck, they have to have a way to control the environment inside where we're not being thrown around right? right we're not feeling that that's true right that's true but what if they have uh something like a what what how do i explain how something like a mouse or like a trackball uh-huh you can easily to turn directions into it right right but it really depends on how the entities or the people who drive in it how they how can they survive in such a G force. Right, right. So that's why people think there may be something from the other place, something not human. What about um uh, uh we're at the end plus we're gonna go sky watching right now. We've got some stuff that we're gonna go and do. Um great conversation tonight. How do you uh one last question? How do you think that they're getting from here or from there to here? I I truly don't believe they are coming from the other space. The other planet, or maybe they come from the other planet, but they're not flying such a distance from this planet to the planet Earth. They could be probably a wormhole, probably a, mm. a things they can transfer between dimension and just get here, right? Don't forget, there are so many sightings they just disappear like this. That's they're right. Not, they're not flying away with very fast speed. They would just disappear. Like disappear. you turn off the light, something like that. There yeah. are people telling me, I saw this craft, but they just disappear, like blinking your eyes and then it's gone. How do you explain that? There well, you know, you know, I don't want to uh, go to fully sci-fi here, but I am. <laughs> the idea, uh, the concept of Stargate, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're, you're taking one step, right? One step, you're here. The next step, you're there. Right. That's it. That's it. That's it. A step. Just a step. a step. And that's what a craft could be doing. 
It's not. It's it's just right, and then that, that's it. It's over. That's true. Don't forget, uh, like months ago, the scientists successfully to make a wormhole. That's right on the the quantum computer, right? Yeah, on yeah. Another another press release happened today. Another uh, a, a different university, different set of uh, physicists and researchers. Um, the same thing, practical uh, with with a quantum computer. Um, and you know how they worded it, Chuck? He said, and I have it right here. Mm -hmm. Check this out. Okay. I have it right here. See, Chuck, I have technology. Are you impressed? <laughs> Are you impressed? Is, is, this is pretty impressive, isn't well, it? Well, yes. This is pretty dang impressive. Okay. Um, right here. A landmark quantum breakthrough paves the way for the world's first experimental wormhole, the invention by University of Bristol physicist Hatim Sali, who gave, he's calling it counterportation, not teleportation, mm -hmm. provides the first ever practical blueprint for creating in the lab a wormhole that can verifiably bridges space. By deploying a novel computing scheme revealed in the journal Quantum Science and Technology, this was today, which harnesses the basic law of physics, okay, a small object can be reconstituted across space without any particles crossing. So you're not moving, you're just going pop, pop. And then it goes. Yeah. Uh, stu uh, study author, Hatina, honorary research fellow at the University of Quantum Engineering Technology, QET Labs, co-founder of his startup, Quantum, said, this is a milestone we have been working towards for a bunch of years. It provides a theoretical as well as practical framework for the true nature of space-time. Mm -hmm. So we're right there, right? And so... Um, imagine where we're going to be with wormholes in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. But what about ET? That's a billion years in front of us. They can definitely easy to come here. With the They're wormhole. just taking that step. Yes, true. Just like you getting that in and out burger. It's that easy. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's really that easy. Yeah, I, yeah, that's true. It's so easy to get here. If we know the technology, we can probably we can do the same. Right, but this technology may this wormhole may not. Uh, what I have in mind is this wormhole may not be created by technology that could be in natural. Nature. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm so worried to get lost and become one of the four one one missing person in giant <laughs> rock when I was alone <laughs> and nobody around me. <laughs> and, and you show up uh, in Zeta Reticuli. <laughs> That's true. You just yeah. drive through it. Hey, man, thank you for traveling uh, the universe from Hong Kong thank to you for come and hang me. out with me here in the bunker. Thank you for having me. And what a great special night. It's an honor and a privilege to have Chuck Fay here with us. Uh, his website, MJ13, it is the link for it is below. And if you speak Mandarin, uh, you're Cantonese. You're, uh, Cantonese. Isn't it the same thing? No. You've told me four totally times tonight different. it's not. In Cantonese, we say doje. In Mandarin, we say xie xie. How do you say fade to black in Cantonese? Oh, fade to black in Cantonese. Binjo haksik. Binjo haksik? Yeah, turn to black or fade to black. Okay, like good enough. <laughs> hey, Chuck. I don't, I'm sure you won't remember next time I see you. I, I, I forgot already. Hey, Chuck, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go Skywatch. Sure. Are you ready? Cool. All right, everybody, have a great night. Thank and, you. Uh, what, what am I doing tomorrow on the show? Oh, I've got Ronnie LeBlanc. Tomorrow night is Bigfoot. So I will see everybody tomorrow. And and so, Chuck. Uh, you can, I can't miss that because the quick, there's Bigfoot screaming at me in the easy to range. <laughs> I'm sure. I, I'm serious. I'm scared the hell out of you. Hey, Chuck. Yes. Help me read the credits. Okay. You, you, uh, you me? Wanna, yeah. You want to help no, me? Read no, no, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. Why not? No, I'm dyslexic. Are you scared? Go ahead. Yes, I am. Go ahead. Chuck <laughs> Faye. Chuck Faye's scared. He's the Jimmy Church of Hong Kong and, and cannot read my credits. Okay. So, Chuck, <laughs> say this right here. Okay. Fade to Black is produced by Houghton, J. Palm, and Rennie. Thank you to Dennis and Kelvin. Webmaster is Drew the Greek. Music by Joe. 
Andre. Intro by SpaceboyMusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by J KJCR for the Game Changer Network. This broadcast is owned and copyright 2023 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. In, and it cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copy, or used anywhere in the known universe without writing permission from Fake to Back or the Game Changer Network. Be safe. Go be the happy. That's what I'm talking about. Chuck Faye. I'm your Jimmy Church. I'll see everybody tomorrow night. Thank you.